it's agreed to. And I call the member for Warringah. Thank you, Madam Deputy Chair. I rise to speak on the Privacy Legislation Amendment, the Enforcement and Other Measures Bill 2022. Whilst the title may not give it all away, for the public and Warringah constituents, this is very much <clears throat> around data privacy and so very much on the forefront of many people's mind. This bill significantly increases penalties for serious or repeated privacy breaches. It provides the Australian Information Commissioner with a suite of improved and new powers to resolve privacy breaches efficiently and effectively, and it ensures that the um, Information Commissioner has comprehensive knowledge of the information compromised in a breach to access the particular risk of harm to individuals, and it gives the Information Commissioner and the Australian Communications and Media Authority greater information sharing powers and increases extraterritorial reach. Uh, in many ways, it is very uh, welcome and, and much needed. I would say in December 2019, the then Attorney General announced that the Australian government, the, then, the previous government, would conduct a review into the Privacy Act um, and that that review aimed to investigate the effectiveness of Australia's current data protection regime to ensure that it uh, protected consumers uh, and their data and best served the Australian economy. Uh, so, so since many of these amendments are the result of that inquiry, um, and certainly very good, the carving out of the provisions of the online privacy bill and the inclusion in this enforcement bill has been prompted by the very recent and significant data breaches. Um, as uh, the minister said in the second reading, the amendments are targeted and measured, and they respond to the most pressing issues arising from the Optus data breach and other recent cyber incidents. And I should say I've received a lot of correspondence from constituents on this issue, and they are of great concern. Um, some of the aspects that I wholeheartedly support in relation to this measure, the greatly increased penalties will provide a real incentive for organisations to properly and thoroughly address how to best protect consumers' data and privacy, but there does need to be a real consideration of just how much data is appropriate to be held. And I think this is all something that members in this place need to grapple with uh, in relation to political parties and members of parliament and what amount of data is being held and whether that is being done in a safe way. We know there's a lot of accumulated data in relay, especially from the major parties through the course of many years of uh, being in the political um, system, um, accumulated in relation to their constituents and that information. There is a real question is what's good for the private sector should also be good for government and should also be good for politicians. And so I do think there is a question around that data uh, the data retention policy around members of parliament and political parties that will need to be addressed and I have uh, I will be raising that in more detail with with the government um, this bill also expands the enforcement and information sharing powers granted to the office of the Australian information commissioner and these are tools which will enable far more comprehensive and proactive oversight and effective policy However, simply leaving it on that basis would be inadequate and naive, and I want to make sure that this is very real for everyone inside and outside. Uh, we need to make sure that this is very well understood and that there is sufficient deterrence in the legislation to make sure the private sector, in fact, does better. We know modern-day uh, commerce involves a lot of retention of data in how to understand uh, consumers' behaviours and markets um, and to better target marketing and sales pitches. But of course with that comes a high level of risk as we've seen with recent incidents. Um, and that real question of then uh, ultimately the, 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 the inconvenience but also the risk falls on the consumer who inadvertently have that information being held and um, are really exposed in a way that I think is unacceptable. It is the reality of our modern world. We are all connected. So much of our habits and practices and lifestyle is in the form of data and is held. Um, but we need to make sure legislation is updated and modernised to keep up with our modern world. <coughs> Excuse me. In relation to... Uh, uh, some of the feedback I've had from constituents, it's really important for me to convey to the government and to the parliament the concerns so many people have uh, in relation to it. 
So a lot of them have been quite surprised at just the extent of information and data that was that has been accessed um, and when they will know and when they will tell me. So the issue is when data breaches occur, that need for very good, clear, prompt communication with impacted parties. Um, and that, I think, has not always occurred for the private sector. Another constituent has written to me and said that in his attempts to replace his licence on Medicare card, stopping his credit agency's report and lodging a police report, he felt that illustrated the disjointed processes, inconsistent information and many agencies not knowing what was required uh, and found that incredibly difficult and time consuming to navigate. Uh, others have very much urged me to urge the government to fix these problems that, rather than waiting for the storm to pass. And I would have to say, so many times in this place we pass legislation in a reactive way. We are fixing a problem when it's already uh, the cat is out of the bag and we've already had the problem. It's really important to have, uh, whether it's inquiries, whether it is audits around current legislation and whether it is in fact fit for purpose and fit for the challenges we are going to continue facing. We know cybersecurity and data is just the, uh, it's our current reality, but it is where so much will be determined in the future. Um, another constituent raised with me the Optus events. Um, just as much as the ongoing, uh, from their perspective, federal government failure um, in, in dealing with it, um, feeling that Australia is out of step with many similar jurisdictions, such as the EU, uh, in terms of having clear, unambiguous legal liability for individual directors for these types of data protection breaches, um, and that feeling that the government still fails to listen to analysts, industry leaders and lobby groups around what best practice should look like in this case. Uh, and I must say, I have certainly grappled with this myself in terms of trying to understand what is best practice in other jurisdictions and how that should be applied here to my own retention of information. Uh, and so I think it, is, it does befall all of us to be very mindful of this aspect of our constituents' lives, of how much this data retention impacts everyone. But I do commend this bill to the House. I commend the government for acting upon it. Um, and I would just urge that we... I, I do have some questions for the Attorney General. For example, when will the Attorney General's review of the Privacy Act be complete and a timeline provided for the introduction and implementation? What additional changes are being considered to the review given recent uh, data breaches? Uh, when will uh, investigation into Optus be complete and how will recommendations be handed out and will they be public? Um, will there be an investigation into the Medibank data breaches? Um, and the obligation to include how data breaches are managed as part of risk management and should that be mandatory for businesses and agencies to ensure a seamless and efficient process? And of course, how will the government ensure that this happen? We need to be more innovative, creative and collaborative in how we develop and implement regulations. The on-the-ground problems need to be remedied and, that, and what is the Attorney-General's plan to achieve this? The Office of the Australian Information Commissioner can and should take a more active role in assisting and working with business, especially small business, to implement crucial legislation, in particular this one, and provide better consumer outcomes. We know that the small and medium businesses, it is incredibly hard as soon as regulatory re regimes change um, and that they have to comply, especially if it's a non-English speaking background or migrant background. And so the question always comes back to make sure that when we change laws to ensure there is the adequate support for small business to be able to actually comply with them and understand their obligations. Um, so we must be diligent and thorough in pursuing those who fail to comply. And for me, that is still a bit of a question of what action will happen in that space. Um, and so this is a great first step, but I urge the government and the department to continue uh, looking for more solutions because data retention and breaches and privacy are very much our problem for the now and the future. Thank you.